Essentially, what happened before the Big Bang? You have to be careful with the language. If you define the Big Bang really carefully, as the time when the universe was very hot and very dense, then, as I said, you can't argue with that, because we can see it. We can look out into the sky. Our best theory of how the universe got into that state is that there was a time before that, and it's called inflation. What existed before the Big Bang? This question has always been a challenge for scientists. But now, it seems they've found the answer to it. However, it has left scientists shocked, as Brian Cox revealed that something terrifying existed before the Big Bang. So, the idea is the universe was, well, it was there, in a sense. Cold and empty. It expanded extremely fast, and that expansion slowed down and stopped. The energy that was driving that expansion got dumped into space, heated it up, and made all the particles out of which we're made. That's what we call the Big Bang. So, what existed before the Big Bang? Why has it left scientists terrified? Let's find out. That theory has a kind of extension called eternal inflation, which suggests that inflation essentially goes on forever. It just stops in little patches. So you imagine the fabric of the universe, space-time, stretching, 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 and then it slows down and stops in little patches. Each one of those patches is basically a big bang in a universe, of which ours is one. You end up with this picture of an infinite, fractal universe, of basically an infinite number of big bangs. And that's called the inflationary multiverse. In the vast cosmos, the idea of absolute nothingness seems theoretical rather than real. Even if all energy were removed from the universe, it wouldn't be truly empty. Currently, the universe is full of matter, radiation, antimatter, neutrinos, dark matter, and dark energy. Even without energy, the universe still creates new forms of energy. This phenomenon confuses us. It seems the universe doesn't understand our concept of complete emptiness. If we removed all energy, leaving a void, one might expect the universe to reach absolute zero, with no particles. Yet that's not the case. Even in an empty universe, its expansion would still produce radiation. This extends far into the future, or even back to the time before the hot Big Bang. The universe, it appears, never truly becomes void. Given all of this, is it plausible that the universe originated from nothing? We can be certain that something always persists. Even if particles, antiparticles, photons, and quanta are removed, empty space remains. If we move away from any mass or energy sources, clear the space of external electric, magnetic, and gravitational fields, and prevent photons or gravitational waves from entering, a kind of physical emptiness still exists. In this space, quantum fields endure, and the fundamental constants and laws of physics endure. There is an inherent finite, positive, and non-zero value of zero-point energy in that space. This represents the closest approximation to nothing within our universe. While you might envision an even more nothing-like state, it lacks physical reality. No experiment can replicate such a condition. By adhering to scientific principles, we acknowledge that something always exists, because true nothingness cannot coexist in our universe. Yet the question of why remains unanswered by science. Presently, our universe appears far from empty. It's teeming with stars, gas, dust, galaxies, quasars, cosmic rays, and radiation, from both starlight and the remnants of the Big Bang. With improved observational tools, we could potentially detect additional signals we anticipate are present. This encompasses gravitational waves generated by any mass moving through a changing gravitational field, mysterious signals from the constituents of dark matter, and a broader perspective on black holes, both active and dormant, aside from those emitting the most radiation. Everything we observe occurs in a universe that isn't static but is continuously changing. From a physical standpoint, it's intriguing to comprehend the evolution of our universe on a grand scale. The fabric of our universe, known as space-time, is expanding. This implies that if you position two points far apart in your space-time, the proper distance between those two points, the time it takes for light to traverse between them, and the wavelength of the light traveling from one point to the other, all increase over time. The universe isn't just getting bigger, it's also getting colder. As it expands, light stretches to longer wavelengths. It moves toward lower energies and cooler temperatures. The universe was hotter in the past and will become even colder in the future. During this process, objects with mass or energy in the universe attract each other, forming clusters and creating a vast cosmic network. If you were to somehow remove everything, matter, radiation, every bit of energy, what would remain? Essentially, you'd have empty space itself still expanding, still governed by the laws of physics, 
and still influenced by quantum fields that fill the universe. This is the closest physical approximation to true nothingness. Yet it still adheres to specific physical principles. To a physicist in this reality, removing anything else would create an unrealistic state that no longer reflects the cosmos we inhabit. This suggests that dark energy, as we currently understand it, would still be present in this hypothetical universe devoid of matter. In essence, if every quantum field in the universe was set to its lowest energy state, we would arrive at the zero-point energy of space, where no additional energy could be extracted for mechanical work. In a universe containing dark energy, a cosmological constant, or the zero-point energy of quantum fields, it's plausible that the zero-point energy wouldn't be truly zero. As the universe continues to expand and cool, there will come a time in the distant future when radiation becomes the dominant component, surpassing other forms of matter and radiation, leaving dark energy as the primary influence. However, there's also a period in the universe's history, not in the future, but in the distant past, when something else besides matter and radiation held dominance. During cosmic inflation, prior to the hot Big Bang, our universe underwent extremely rapid and constant expansion. Instead of being dominated by matter and radiation, the cosmos was controlled by the field energy of inflation, akin to today's dark energy, but much more potent and expanding at a significantly faster pace. If eternal inflation is accurate, but time remains finite, where might the universe have originated? There must have been a beginning, correct? To address this question thoroughly, let's unravel three commonly conflated concepts and discuss each individually. 1. The hot Big Bang in relation to our universe. 2. The theory of cosmic or cosmological inflation, and its role in proceeding and preparing for the Big Bang. 3. The issue of an ultimate beginning or origin for our universe, and why both inflation and the original concept of the Big Bang might not offer a satisfactory solution to this question. In the early 20th century, a significant synthesis took place when four key pieces of information came together. A breakthrough by Alexander Friedman in Einstein's general relativity, showing that a universe filled uniformly with any form of matter and energy cannot remain static, but must either expand or contract. Bang emerged from this very concept, a singularity, where the known laws of physics break down, and conventional understanding ceases to apply. But as our knowledge progressed, particularly with the introduction of quantum field theory and general relativity, scientists began to question whether this singularity was a true physical reality or just a mathematical artifact of an incomplete model. This is where cosmic inflation comes in. Proposed by Alan Guth in the 1980s, inflation is the idea that a fraction of a second before what we call the Big Bang, the universe underwent a brief period of exponential expansion. This inflationary epoch smoothed out any irregularities and explains why the universe today appears homogeneous and isotropic on large scales. Importantly, it also provides a mechanism for seeding the tiny fluctuations that later grew into galaxies and cosmic structure. But inflation didn't just answer existing questions, it raised new ones. One of the most profound implications is eternal inflation, a theory suggesting that inflation never really stops entirely but continues in different regions of space. In this view, our universe is just one bubble in a vast multiverse, with other bubble universes constantly forming in an eternally inflating cosmic foam. This means there was no singular beginning in the traditional sense. Instead of a unique, time zero event, we may be living in one patch of a much larger, possibly infinite multiverse, with no absolute origin point. This idea radically challenges our understanding of time, causality, and even the definition of nothing. So, what existed before the Big Bang? If the inflationary model is correct, the hot Big Bang wasn't the beginning, it was a transition from a cold, empty, expanding space dominated by inflationary energy into a hot, dense plasma filled with particles and radiation. Before that moment, space itself already existed in some form, governed by different physical rules. And this is what shocks many scientists. The nothing before the Big Bang wasn't nothing at all. It was a quantum vacuum, a seething landscape of fields and energies beyond our direct comprehension. A space that can birth entire universes, possibly infinitely. This isn't just philosophical musing, it's where our current physics leads us. But even inflation leaves one critical question unanswered. Why is there something rather than nothing? What mechanism triggered inflation itself? What are the rules, if any, governing the larger multiverse? These questions lie at the edge of science, where physics meets metaphysics. As of now, the origin of it all, the ultimate before, remains one of the deepest mysteries in cosmology. But thanks to inflationary theory, quantum mechanics, and observational breakthroughs, we're closer than ever to understanding not just how the universe evolved, 
but what might have come before. Bang Theory in the Early Universe The Big Bang Theory resulted in the formation of five key expectations regarding the early universe's hot and dense conditions. These forecasts became the foundation of the Big Bang Theory. 1. Expansion of the Universe The universe ought to demonstrate expansion because of a distinct redshift-distance relationship among extragalactic objects. 2. Initial Uniformity and Structure Formation Initially, the universe should have been relatively uniform, with structures like stars, galaxies, and clusters of galaxies gradually forming and evolving over time. 3. High temperature in the early universe. In the past, the universe was hotter, preventing the formation of stable, neutral atoms. This prediction led to the discovery of the cosmic microwave background, which is observable today. 4. Formation of light elements. In the initial stages of the universe, when it was extremely hot, atomic nuclei couldn't form stably. This led to the creation of light elements such as lithium, hydrogen, and helium isotopes. 5. Significance of neutrinos. The universe was so hot that neutrinos played a significant role. Recently, this prediction was confirmed, indicating that cosmic neutrinos should have detectable effects on both the large-scale structure and the leftover radiation from the Big Bang. With strong observational evidence supporting these predictions, the Big Bang theory has remained uncontested as the primary explanation for the early universe since the mid-1960s, coinciding with the discovery of the cosmic microwave background. Challenges to the Big Bang Theory During the 1960s and 1970s, the hot Big Bang Theory grew, but certain challenges surfaced that the Big Bang on its own was unable to resolve. Several observations contradicted the concept of the universe originating from a singular state of incredibly high temperatures and densities. Three of these challenges stand out. 1. The horizon problem. When we observe different directions, the universe seems to possess uniform density and temperatures throughout. But since the beginning of the hot Big Bang, these regions have never had the opportunity to communicate, exchange information, or achieve thermal equilibrium with one another. This raises the question, how did they evolve to exhibit uniform temperature and conditions across the board? 2. The flatness problem. In a universe that's expanding, there's a continual tug-of-war between the initial expansion pushing things apart and the efforts of gravitational forces to pull everything back together. Remarkably, in our universe, these opposing forces appear to be perfectly balanced, resulting in a spatially flat universe. The question arises, why did our universe come into existence with these particular characteristics? 3. The monopole, or ancient relic, problem. If the universe underwent extreme temperatures and energy conditions in its early stages, why do we not observe any exotic remnants, such as right-hand neutrinos and magnetic monopoles? Theoretically, it should be possible to find these particles still present today. Inflation, the proposed solution. Rather than just accepting these conditions as how the universe came to be, which contradicts the scientific method, scientists search for a mechanism that could establish and explain these initial conditions. In 1980, Alan Guth introduced a groundbreaking solution to these astronomical mysteries. He suggested an early phase of rapid and continuous expansion, called inflation, where the universe's energy wasn't spread among matter and radiation particles but was an intrinsic part of space itself via a field or another mechanism. This idea could solve all three problems. Uniformity, horizon problem. The uniformity of temperature and density throughout the universe is attributed to the past interconnectedness of everything. This connection was stretched during the early expansion phase, inflation, resulting in the current conditions observed. Flatness problem. Inflation expanded the universe so much that, regardless of its initial state, the visible part now appears uniformly flat. Monopole problem. The absence of ancient remnants is explained by inflation preventing the universe from reaching excessively high energies or temperatures. The maximum temperature reached after inflation avoids the formation of these exotic remnants. Inflation and modern observations. In the 1980s, inflation theory made precise and predictable predictions regarding the beginnings of cosmic structure, predictions that should be detectable in both the cosmic microwave background and the large-scale layout of the universe. These forecasts, crafted decades ago, have been validated by observations spanning from the 1990s to the present day. They encompass an almost, though not entirely, scale-invariant spectrum of imperfections. Variations in density and temperature. Density imperfections are completely adiabatic, rather than any isocurvature, representing changes on larger scales than what a signal traveling at the speed of light in an expanding universe could generate. Temperature limits. A maximum temperature limit for the entire universe in the hot Big Bang, 
notably smaller than the Planck scale. Because inflation involves a rapid expansion of space, rather than resulting in a singularity as in the original Big Bang model, it presents an alternative depiction of the beginning. Instead of time and space gradually breaking free from one state, inflation proposes a rapid expansion leading to the Big Bang. This raises a fundamental question about the actual beginning of the universe, if such a notion even makes sense. Within the framework of the hot Big Bang without inflation, we could trace back and reach a singular state where the universe's size approaches zero in a finite. Within the framework of the hot Big Bang without inflation, we could trace back and reach a singular state where the universe's size approaches zero in a finite amount of time, a point of infinite density and temperature, often referred to as the initial singularity. However, this concept presents serious theoretical challenges. At such extreme conditions, the known laws of physics, especially general relativity, break down, and quantum effects become dominant. Yet, without a fully developed and accepted theory of quantum gravity, we cannot definitively describe or understand what occurred at or before this singularity. In contrast, inflation offers a more coherent narrative. It suggests that the Big Bang was not the very beginning, but rather a transitional phase, a reheating period, following the end of inflation, during which the potential energy driving inflation was converted into the hot, dense matter and radiation that characterized the early universe. This perspective removes the necessity of a true singularity and replaces it with a phase where space itself underwent exponential expansion, smoothing out irregularities, diluting relic particles, and setting the initial conditions for the Big Bang as we observe it. Thus, inflation doesn't just address the shortcomings of the classic Big Bang model, it redefines the origin story of our cosmos. It reframes the beginning of the observable universe not as a singular, chaotic eruption, but as the result of a powerful and elegant mechanism rooted in the physics of fields and space-time geometry. As research continues, physicists strive to uncover what exactly caused inflation, what preceded it, if anything, and how it connects with the elusive theory of everything that unites quantum mechanics with gravity. While many questions remain, the inflationary model, backed by increasingly precise observations, continues to stand as the most robust and comprehensive explanation for the universe's earliest moments and its vast, structured, and remarkably uniform present.